Hi, I'm Scott Torrance. I'm the principal of Scott Torrance Landscape Architect, Inc. And my name is Tom Balsley of Thomas Balsley Associates, Landscape Architects. We are the design team for Aiken Place Park and Bayside Private Streets. Today, we're going to walk you through the preliminary design concepts. I'm going to start by summarizing our understanding of the site, context, and then pass it over to Tom to describe our scale analysis, programming, and concept development. Aiken Place Park is named after Alexander Aiken, a surveyor of the town of York in 1797. The site itself was part of the lake until filling operations started in 1912 and were completed by the 1950s by the Toronto Harbour Commission. Aiken Place Park is on the site of former Marine Terminal Building No. 29, which was built in 1959 and later taken over by Campar, a courier company. After that, tennis and golf bubbles were constructed on the site. The site is located within the East Bayfront Precinct and adjacent to Sherburne Commons and Canada's Sugar Beach Park. Nearby is Corktown Commons and Cherry Beach. The site is rapidly changing as new development is constructed. Immediately to the west of the park is Aqua Vista with Artscape located within it and future commercial will eventually be built on the north side of the park and commercial and residential to the east. Nearby are the Aquilina, Mond and Daniels Waterfront City of the Arts developments. There are pedestrian only connections through the Muse that connect Aiken Place Park to Queens Quay there is a shared street named Canadario Way along the park's east side and a connection through Aquilina to Sherburne Common Park. There will also be a future shared street connection from Edgewater to the Parliament Slip. Aiken Place Park is about 3,000 square meters or three quarters of an acre in area. And we're going to show you how that compares to other parks in terms of size and the kind of program they have. We'll come back to this later when Tom walks you through this. We looked at the wind analysis and the sunshade analysis of the park to get an understanding of how it will actually feel throughout the seasons. In the spring, the west side of the park will be sunny in the morning and also be very comfortable for sitting. So it'll be a great place to locate chairs and tables. At the same time, Along the west side of the park in the afternoon, there will be a sun pocket there as well. However, it may be a little breezy unless we mitigate the wind on that side. Similarly, during the autumn, we'll have the same conditions. The west side of the park and the east side of the park are both comfortable for seating during the morning and the afternoon. However, the middle of the park may be a little breezier. In the summer, the park is comfortable for sitting and when it's hot the shade of the building in the afternoon along the west side and in the morning along the east side may be appreciated. During the winter along the east side of the park it'll be sunny from about 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. However the wind conditions may make it uncomfortable for sitting. Therefore this may be an area that we look to moderate or mitigate the wind a little bit to make it more comfortable to sit on a sunny winter's day. So we're presenting to you now the uh, park scale comparison charts that will help you uh, get an idea of the scale of Aiken Place Park relative to others that you may know uh, around Toronto and some elsewhere. Starting with Teardrop Park, a small park in the lower end of New York City, uh, Manhattan, in a place called Battery Park City. It is surrounded by residential buildings, and you can see from the uh, dashed red lines, uh, that is the size of Aiken Park, and uh, that gives you a sense of the kind of scale uh, that we're working with with Aiken Park. It's quite small. Uh, and conducive to a more quiet, contemplative residential space like we have here at Teardrop Park. 
Uh, you'll see some other images of uh, Teardrop Park. Uh, in some cases, there are uh, lawn panels, but it's mostly a planted area, a heavily vegetated, and it has very interesting elements, in this case, uh, elements of beautiful rock formations that have been brought into the park to become the signature piece of the park itself. And here you can see that, that it is a child-friendly place in, in spite of the kind of the planted, heavily planted character. There are places for small children to play uh, and uh, for people to wander around in a very quiet, intimate setting. A space you may know, Village of Yorkville Park. Uh, also, you can see the uh, we've superimposed Aiken's outlines over uh, Yorkville Park. Uh, and you all know that Yorkville has a series of program spaces, uh, some of which are, are uh, plazas, and, and some being that wonderful rock formation that is also a child-friendly element. And this is Sherburne Commons Park uh, in Toronto. Uh, and again, you can see uh, Aiken Park uh, superimposed over the large lawn of Sherburne. So that'll give you a sense of the scale of Aiken again. Uh, you'll notice in Sherburne, we have an awful lot of program uh, for the park. Uh, the, one of the major components being uh, active play for children. This is a, a, a good example of uh, ways in which we can uh, program Aiken in a complementary way to Sherburne instead of duplicating the spaces and the activities that are found in Sherburne. And this is uh, Sugar Beach, uh, a wonderful destination park that people either uh, purposely go to or discover as they're moving along the water's edge. And again, uh, in Sugar Beach, you can get a sense of how large Aiken is. Sugar Beach is a space that's dedicated to the active uh, uh, use of the beach uh, in the form of sunbathing uh, and climbing on the rocks. It has all those great qualities and it again helps us determine what program activities and spaces we need to bring to Aiken. And this is a good uh, summary diagram to help us not only with the scale of Aiken relative to those spaces that we've shown as case studies, but also the distribution of uh, program, of activities and spaces that we find in some of these parks, especially Sherburne and Sugar Beach, uh, showing that uh, Aiken can, can be mostly a passive contemplative space, uh, knowing that the neighborhood is well served by the other two parks. So a uh, very important stage in the design process is one in which we establish goals for ourselves, and then in turn develop design principles that will lead our conceptual design work. Here you'll see the goals we've uh, set for Aiken Park to be to develop a neighborhood amenity for the Bayside community, to respond and interact with the public realm, to interpret site heritage, to reflect the continuous water edge, to celebrate views to the lake, to harmonize with the Bayside materials, to promote sustainable development, and to complement Bayside's existing open spaces. And the design principles that have come from that, that are guiding our conceptual design thinking, uh, have to do with creating a refuge, a retreat, a space for contemplation, a space in which there are neighborhood connections, a signature space that is memorable, and yet a space that also has openness and intimacy. Those design principles uh, then lead us to the park program. So we've developed this base program list for Aiken that will guide our design efforts. And it entails toddler play-friendly spaces, urban dog run, multi-use sitting deck or terraces, intimate accessible lawn, intimate expressions of accessible water, bike racks, water bottle filler stations, charging stations, and of course Wi-Fi service, 
shelter for seasonal comforts of heat, mist, or light, heritage interpretation, intimate garden rooms, single or group workspaces, diverse and open flexible plazas for small events, versatile public seating, seasonal planting appeal, 24-7 multifaceted lighting, wind breaks, strong aerial view appeal, lake views, multi-purpose picnic lawn, sunning lawn, and topography and sledding lawns. Just to provide a glimpse of uh, what some of these program elements uh, may uh, look like, not necessarily in their design, but their character. Uh, the pavilion, workspaces, planting with four seasons of interest, play lawns, a water table, a water rill, group seating, work nooks, flexible seating under a bosque of trees, social seating, lounge seating, heritage reference, a raised overlook, lighting. And of course, all parts of the park will be designed to the highest sustainability standards, and they may include bioswales or tree canopy for shade, high albedo pavement, local material sourcing, dark sky compliant low energy lighting, drought tolerant native plants, certified wood, and harvested irrigation water. All of this leads us to uh, a study in the concept of the park design itself. So the process continues with the the exploration of ways in which the program elements can be uh, arranged within the site and develop certain relationships with one another that best suit the overall vision of the park. And they all lead to a preferred program diagram that will then lead to the actual concept design. And here you'll see those program elements that we listed before are beginning to find their place in this park, and that begins to lead us to form making. Many sketches led to this sketch, which is a precursor to the refined concept plan. And you'll see the rising, the sloping lawn that creates a high topographic element in the park. Uh, its edges are planted. You can see the path from the plaza at the bottom leading up to the very precipice of that topographic form. At the very top, there's a lake overlook uh, that looks out over the lake, but also uh, out over the park activity below. And there are, there's the alley of trees that, that make up the promenade. Uh, on the western edge of the park, right next to Aqua Vista, within uh, which there are small intimate seating rooms and work rooms. And then along the Merchant Wharf sidewalk edge, you'll see the beginnings of a notion of a urban porch that has public furniture for seating, uh, looking out over the uh, ac sidewalk activity, the promenade, and the lake beyond. This is the refined concept plan, and you'll see uh, the contours in the lawn lifts this entire landscape up into a landform. At the top is the pavilion that rests, that hovers above the overlook that looks out over the lake. There's a sloping trail that zigzags up the side of the lawn, along which is a water channel that children can play in. Uh, as they move up and down the slope. The slope itself is a nice enough gradient for a, a wonderful place to take in the sun, but also a great place to sled in the wintertime, especially for toddlers. This whole form is, its side slopes are heavily planted with ground covers and shrubs and trees. Along the west edge, you'll see the promenade that continues the Queen's Key Muse 
view corridor all the way to the lake under a bosque of trees uh, with garden beds and social seating areas and work areas that are carved out of the, the central garden area. To the north, you'll see the dog run, slightly depressed from the sidewalk level by about 18 inches. And the top of the landform itself is almost two and a half meters above the sidewalk level. As we get to the southern edge, the plaza leads smoothly out onto the wood deck, which is serving as a urban porch. There we will find movable tables and chairs and public furniture to be arranged in different ways, looking out over the sidewalk activity and the lake beyond. And here we have a view from the southwest corner, looking up the slope uh, to the pavilion roof structure and the overlook above. And you can see the water cascading down the side of the slope and, and terminating down at the plaza level. Here we have a view from the northwest corner, looking out over the park. You'll see the dog run in the foreground, very close to Edgewater's sidewalk. And then the top of the landform with the overlook. You'll see the lawn sloping down to the plaza beyond. And beyond that, you'll see that urban porch with its furniture overlooking the lake. Here we have a view from the northwest corner at the street level. And this is where we can see the planters with seasonal color that, that have uh, public seating and workspaces carved within their forms. And they are framed by a bosque of trees uh, on either side. And then just beyond, you'll see the topography of the landform would be heavily planted, a little bit of the dog run, and of course the roof overhead the, uh, the uh, overlook. Here we have a view from the sidewalk. Looking into the park from the southwest corner, you'll see the three low steps that lead us up to the podium with barrier-free access a little further up the promenade. There's seating in the urban porch off to the right, looking out over the lake. And of course, the lawn sloping up to the very top of the landform and the overlook shelter. Well, thanks for listening to our presentation. We look forward to your feedback and hope you'll be involved in the public consultation process for Aiken Place Park.